Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. We have a show full of the hottest topics everyone's talking about, and there is a lot to discuss. Now, this is our last show before our summer break. We'll be back on September 9th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you know where to find us on our YouTube channel, Stephen Knight Show. Um, but we'll mind you all over social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, of course, TikTok, Stephen Knight Show. Um, please subscribe. Stop what you're doing right now. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please uh comment and like and um and make sure you're registered to vote we have a, a election a crazy election this year and everyone needs to be able to make sure they're voting let the voice be heard so also fourth of july week i think the uh, mother of juneteenth said it best that juneteenth freed the people and fourth of july freed the the land so i'll be visiting uh my family back in virginia fourth of, of july but anyway, family, how y'all doing? Ania, Chica? It's hot. Yeah, it is hot. <laughs> it is. That's the highly favorite. <laughs> Brittany's out today. Um, she had family in town for the holiday, so we're thinking about her. All right, if you hear my um, fire alarm, the chirp, I cannot figure out how to change the battery, so please bear with me. <laughs> All right, question of the day is, do you prefer being hot or cold weather-wise? Lania. Hot. Chica? Same here. I prefer cold. Because cold, you can always bundle up. Hot, no. you can't. Anything. Hot, you can cool down. But cold is like, I don't like shaking like a crackhead. <laughs> it was interesting. Well, Brittany, she texted us answer. She said that she, what did she say? She said it's a whole rundown of all the, the hot topics. But I think she said she enjoys being cold. She loves cold weather. It's ironic, she's from Texas. You can, you can lose limbs being cold. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, tweets at home. Uh, Steve and I show us a chill and let us know, do you prefer being hot or cold? All right, well, the president's first presidential debate happened last Thursday. I was glued to the TV. And um, a lot of people were concerned over Joe Biden's performance. He thought it was very weak. He seemed older. He seemed that he didn't have a lot of energy. Um, now, Trump, during the debate, he lied over 30 times. They did fact checking. and He lied over 30 times. Um, he declared himself the winner. He took a victory lap the next day at a few rallies he held. But Biden, he did address um, his performance. Um, he had two rallies the next day where he uh, appeared to be more energetic. He, he didn't stutter a lot. Um, he had won a rally, North Carolina won in, um, in New York. He also did a fundraiser that night in New York. Um, but he said that, you know, I'm going to close with this. I'm not a young guy. He said, let's state the obvious. He said, I don't walk as fast as I used to. I don't talk as fast as I used to. I don't debate as good as I used to. He said, but one thing I do know is how to tell the truth. And he said, and um, he said, I know right from wrong. And he said that he would not be running for re-election if he didn't wholeheartedly believe that he could do the job. He said, I know how to do this job. Um, now, some Democrats after the debate were calling for him to drop out um, behind closed doors. They weren't um, saying it in public, but um, a lot of the major, uh, more popular uh, Democrats did um, defend Biden. President Obama, Governor Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Jasmine Crawford, a lot of them, they had, they, they're sticking with them. Um, they talked about the challenge of replacing someone this late in the game. Um, there's no one that has the national recognition he has other than Kamala Harris, and she has low ratings. Um, she's in the 30 percentile. Um, the, the highest Democrat is Michelle Obama. Of course, she's not running. So they're saying how difficult it would be. But um, I want to get you all's take on the debate. And do you think, because only Biden can decide to step down. That's the only way they can replace him. They can't just do it. He has to decide to do so. And he's saying he's not. Um, I'll start with you, Chike. What are your thoughts on the debate? I'm going to apologize ahead of time, uh, just simply because this is, I'm very passionate about this, and you may hear profanity fly out my mouth. <laughs> um, I think that people are putting too much emphasis on the debate. Debates are important, but the mission is still the same. The purpose on why we want Representative Joe Biden in the office is because of what he stands for. That principle is still there. Whether he stuttered, 
even if he didn't show up, the principle on why he is there is still viable. We're fighting for democracy. The fact that you can turn your key and go into your house at your own volition, that's on the line. The fact that you can say what you want to say out of your mouth, that's still on the line. We're not voting for the man. We're voting for the purpose and what he stands for. He can stutter all day long. Uncle Joe is still getting my vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the um, takeaways from the debate was uh, trending on X what for the term black jobs. Because if you remember, Trump said that migrants are coming to our country and still in black jobs and double down on they said Hispanic jobs. And so it was trending, what's a black job? And I even saw on TikTok today, um, it was a doctor's office, a black, it was a majority of black that they showed the video and they were saying, what black job do you have? And they're naming their type, the type of doctor they were or whatever they're, they do. Um, and I saw people in Congress doing the same thing. But Neil, what are your thoughts on um, on the debate? I don't, I, I didn't hear Chike cuss. Right. I'm disappointed. I didn't hear him cuss. <laughs> um, I'm going to try not to cuss. <clears throat> no, I didn't watch the debate. I saw a clip mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm really working on my, on my mental health right now. Yeah. So <laughs> everybody has a bad debt. It happens. That debate does not define what Joe Biden has and, and this particular administration has done thus far. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that the list is longer, but I counted at least there's been 21 things that the Republican Party has voted against, either fully 100 percent, it's like between 100 percent to 68 percent. And, and voting against certain things. I'm not going to read the whole list. I just want to read some of those things. Um, they voted against cheaper gas, insulin, uh, child tax credits, student debt relief. Um, I know I suffer from that. Um, gerrymandering, climate control, cli climate change, Roe v. Wade. Um, and they and 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 we need to touch on the Supreme Court and the decision that they just made. Um, Cause I know that we're going to do that. But the one thing that was a trigger is that now it is a crime to be homeless. Yes. Yes. It's a crime. Even though you ended up in this circumstance, cause all of us are a paycheck away from being homeless. You've ended up in this circumstance and now you can get arrested and put in jail for it. This is what happens when y'all don't vote. Because he put them demons in the position. And I think this was a conversation before that maybe Supreme Court justices shouldn't be a lifetime appointment. Yep. Um, so I'm disappointed in CNN, but I saw the landscape changing when the new guy took over. They didn't invite any black media outlets. Um, and then nothing went out until after, you know, there was an uproar about it and no live fact checking was done. Yeah. No live fact checking was done during this debate. Everything was after, but what you do in that time, you see the cycle that happened, mm -hmm. nothing positive because you didn't live check. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who the moderator was, but she was horrible. Whoever it was. Yeah, so it was Bash, Jake Tapper Dana and Dana Bash. Dana Bash. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Yeah, no, it was horrible. They should have got the dude that was roasting the Republicans. He uh, is good. Yes. Ken Clark. They uh, should have got him. Yeah. Because he was roasting them. He will get you. Um, I, I, <sighs> it is, we are living in such a dangerous time. It's unprecedented and it's scary mm -hmm. because y'all really and we're gonna move on because I know we're gonna talk about the Supreme Court. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave yeah. it. I wanna say this. There was a gentleman, he was on CNN, 
And he called them out. He said, you know, I love you guys, but you two, are, you guys are complicit here at CNN if Donald Trump wins because you made the headline about Biden's performance. And yet Trump had a horrible performance where he lied over 30 times. Why wasn't that the number one story? Why is it about Biden's um, health? But um, I want to say before we move to the Supreme Court that when you elect someone, you elect their administration. You elect, you elect their administration um, and it's supposed to be for your best interest. I've been, someone I've been going back and forth with on Instagram said that he's voting for Trump because of his daughters. That made no sense to me. Um, but your administration now, over 40 people in Trump's first administration refused to endorse him in this administration, say he's unfit for office. That should be telling in itself. That should be telling in itself. But let's get on Excuse the screen. I'm sorry. Can I address that person that was going back and forth with you about their daughters? Yeah. You're voting for Trump about your daughters because he took their rights away. They do not have the proper health care that they would have as women. So that's the man that you want to vote for for yeah. your daughters. Good luck, brother. Yeah. I said, I told hey, I, I, I said, your mother, their mother and grandmother have more rights than they have. Add, add on to that. He likes to grab people by the poom poom. Mm -hmm. He's a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. Twice, thrice over. Yeah. And that's okay. And now with the next thing we about to talk about. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, the Supreme Court ruled that former presidents have immunity from prosecution for acts committed in their office capacity, official capacity, excuse me. And a six to three ruling the court's decision puts a delay in former President Donald Trump's criminal case regarding char charges that he that he took to overturn the 2020 election results. While the court maintains that president is not above the law, he's entitled to broad immunity for official acts. It says under our constitutional structure of separate powers, the nature of the presidential power entities of form I'm sorry, entitled, excuse me, a former president to absolutely absolute immunity for criminal prosecution for actions within his conclusive and reclusive uh, constitutional authority. Chief Justice Roberts said he's entitled to at least presumptive immunity from prosecution for his official acts. There is no immunity for our unofficial acts. What they said was that who determines what the official acts are? But it says the three uh, liberal judges have a uh, dis dis dissenting opinion about decision. Justice uh, Sotomayor added, in every use of official power, the president is now a, is now a king above the law. I'll let you take it away, Lanier. Yeah, we are fucked if he gets into office. Yeah. That's really what this sum this this sums it up to. Project twenty twenty five has been in motion for a long time. They're just able to really now let it really really hang out there, and it's out there, which also ties into the other story that you have about now you want to incorporate the Ten Commandments in school. I thought state state and you know religion should yeah. be separate, um, but. The fact that there's nothing that I, what can we do but vote? And I, I do have a question. I don't, you know, I don't know if y'all can have it. It could be a rhetorical question if y'all, you know, with Joe Biden being in office, right? Is there something that he can do in the official capacity that he's in as president to? To, I don't I don't know if I want to say to to change that I don't know and I guess maybe like I said it's a rhetorical question but how do you have someone who's been convicted a lot of times twice twice impeached and just an all-around pervert sexual deviant not just I don't it's not about those who voted in favor of this I hope you rot in hell. 
I do. I honestly do. It because I don't know it. I don't know where we are right now. This this is beyond the twilight zone. Chica. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, Leah, because you're 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 on the same thought process as me. Since you want to play around, let's play around. Since we have presidential immunity now, Joe Biden, let's get out dark Brandon and get to uh getting dark. If he has immunity, he could get a team of lawyers, just like that other man got his team of lawyers, and do the snake charming way of doing lawyering and finagle their way to keeping certain people out of office because they may have a blemish record, i.e. Uh, your Matt Gates, i.e. Uh, what's the other guy's name? The one that didn't show up to uh, to any of the proceedings, but he, he always wants to take people to court. Jim Jordan. Him. Jim Jordan. Oh, oh, oh the gosh. mouthpiece. The yeah. mouthpiece. Yeah. Any, anyone that is in speculation of any crime at this point in time, due to official acts, Joe Biden can work his way to getting those people out of office because he is the president. Yeah. Mm. He can do some type of executive order because of the power that they now gave the president. And wouldn't it be fitting if the tables were turned and given them a little dose of what they gave? But I just think, and it's not because I'm a part of the party, but I just think that the Democratic Party plays a little too clean because we abide by the rules and we don't get anywhere for it. What happens if we turn dark? Yeah. What happens if we turned rogue and we decided to do the things that were done to us, to them? Yeah. Then we would be guilty of everything that we accused them of. Mm -hmm. Project 2025 is no joke. And I don't know if people out there have looked it up. I know Taraji did a big uh, uh, speech yeah. about it on uh, BET, which I thought was brilliant, mm -hmm. using that platform to get that message out there. But I've been talking about 2025 for quite some time now. I don't have that kind of platform, but I'm serious about what's going on. People, pay attention. The rights that you think that you are going to have, you're not going to have them. And I know I've joked around in the past years, but it's becoming more serious as we get closer to this election. You may be in shackles again. Yeah. On some that, real, that real serious shit. You that may part. be in shackles again in a box doing somebody's bidding. You better pay attention. Absolutely. If you ever watch 12 Years a Slave and how he was just snatched back from his freedom and resorted back to slavery, check it out. Yep. It's no joke. It's you know what it, and I, I need for people to watch Designated Survivor. With Keith or Sutherland, mm. watch watch that show, and look at all the threats against democracy, and what and what needed to be done, even though it might not have gone with your moral compass, but in order to save democracy, certain things needed to be done, mm -hmm. and you had to be okay with it at the end of the day. Yeah. Because it saved democracy. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's what is at stake. Right. Democracy. And if you look at it now, people have since that man was in office, you know, you know, people will fly under the radar mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. They're more comfortable now. So so we're gonna go back to when somebody felt like you looked at them wrong and now we gotta get hung up again and lynched. Mm -hmm. You got to go to certain places. You guys, the cancer in America is now aggressive and it needs to be cut out. You have a Supreme Court justice. Um, one of his vacation homes held the American flag upside down. Which two, is, two homes, mm -hmm. two homes. Which is a uh, solidarity of January 6th. Supreme Court justice. Um, we'll, go, we'll get to the BT Awards, but I want to talk about this since you brought it up. Louisiana just became the first state that mandated the Ten Commandments to be displayed in every public uh, classroom, a, a public uh, school classroom. Republican Governor Jeff Landry signed the bill into law last Wednesday and since then has faced backlash from parents, courts, and lawmakers. According to New York Times, the legislation is part of a wider effort by conservative Christian groups to increase, increase uh, public displays of faith. Advocates argue that the Ten Commandments are not only religious, but also his historical, asserting that the uh, direct, directive excuse me, from God to Moses and Exodus significantly shaped U.S. law. 
After the announcement, the governor said, I can't wait to be sued. He is already aware that he may be challenged by the Supreme Court. Similarly, in 2005, the Supreme Court ruled that public display of the Ten Commandments in two Kentucky County courthouses was similarly unconstitutional. So I, they had, I, I don't know if she was the governor, I mean, not governor, she was a, I don't know what she was, a representative. She had been doing, going, making her rounds on um, CNN and other shows defending this. And um, the host asked her, what do you say to a Muslim child or someone who doesn't have that same faith? And she said, don't look, don't look at it. And he said, well, what would your, what if someone brought something that your, your children didn't, that wasn't their faith? She said, it's not about that. So <laughs> um, what are your thoughts? Uh, Chief, I'll let you go with this. Let's, let's flip it around. I try to put things in, in people's lap that maybe they can understand. What if it was a swastika and they put things in there that were Hitler's beliefs? They, they took quotes from Mein Kampf and they put them up on the wall in your classroom and they were forcing. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, some of them would probably like that. They would probably go for that. This day and but age. just imagine your child in school and your child has a peanut allergy and they're forcing your child to eat peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do here. We have peanut butter and jelly every morning for breakfast. Everyone eats it. No matter what is going on, everyone eats it. How would you feel? Right. Is that palatable? I think it's horrible. It goes against everything from what America is supposed to stand for. It's supposed to be a melting pot. Right. If anybody ever remember Schoolhouse Rock when they sang the song? It's a melting pot. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes from everywhere, and we create this one big, beautiful nation where we're all getting along. No, we may not all get along all the time, but when did we develop this way of living now where you can muscle me out of my beliefs, or you're going to force me to ingest the injustice that you want to inflict upon me? How is it godlike mm -hmm. for you to force your way upon me? Yep. It's funny you want to put up the commandments. It's supposed to be Christian. Christ loved everybody, no matter what. Doesn't sound very Christian to me. And their savior Trump broke all um ten of them of the commandments. <laughs> uh -huh. Lania, what are your thoughts? They have Catholic schools for when you want to include religion mm -hmm. in some form of education. That's what Catholic schools for. They have uh uh theological schools. Like those schools are specifically for for that realm. Right. Not public schools. And what you not gonna do is force something that you really don't believe in. You don't believe in it. You're using it. Just like they used it on the slaves back in the day. Mm -hmm. You're using it. This all boils down to money and power. Yeah. That's what this boils down to. It has nothing to do with uh, God, Christian, nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is about money, power, and greed. And it's interesting, you want you want to put the Ten Commandments in the school, but you want to take out Black history. Mm -hmm. yep. But the Ten Commandments is history? Yeah. But you want to take out Black history? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in they're both history? They're, they they're both a part of history. They don't want white, white children feeling bad. And, and want... might I recall... One of the commandments is thou shalt not steal. You're stealing our history. Yep. Stealing, stealing, stealing it. There's supposed to be freedom of choice and free will. And I distinctly remember all Colin Kaepernick did was kneel for a flag that y'all just told me a Supreme Court justice hung upside down in support of people who stormed the Capitol. All he did was kneel. After getting direction from a military 
vet. from a military vet who did it. Mm -hmm. And let's keep in mind, it's official on paper that hanging a flag upside down is against the Constitution. Doing a lot to the flag is against the Constitution, mm -hmm. like burning it and all kinds of stuff. And it's not I even supposed to touch the ground. Yeah. Yep. I got one in my window right now because my brother was in the army and it's in a case. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, I really, <laughs> it leaves you flabbergasted because it's like, what can we do? Mm -hmm. What needs to happen in and this it's, time? It, it's so easy to say we have to get out here and vote, right? But beyond voting, right? What else can we do? And so when people get super frustrated, a little bit of history. In France, they had this thing called the revolution where things weren't going the way that they wanted them to go. The king was doing the most and the people got sick of it. And they said, enough is a F enough. And they went off and they stormed the palace and they tore that place apart. Much like what these fools did with the Capitol mm -hmm. on January 6th. Yep. They just weren't successful. Mm -hmm. I think that with these people that are in government and all of them, all of them swore oaths on a Bible to take the position that they were about to take seriously and honor it by the Constitution and by God. Part of their job all of them is to help keep order to this great country of ours. Yep. Seems to me like you're pushing and you're edging for something of a catastrophe to happen. Yeah. Because people are not going to be at rest with these decisions coming as strong and as fast as they're coming all at once. And when you start, once you start messing with people's way of life, there's going to be a change here. Yeah. You know, we joked around with this man's um, getting an office. Oh, I'm going to move out of this the country. I'm going to move here. I'm going to move there. For the first time, seriously, I'm seriously thinking about it. This is nuts. And he's given a voice to these people. Like Linnea said, they used to be inward with it. I saw on TikTok the other day, this woman, she wished everybody a happy white day. And what I was the all the people commenting. They said we should make this a happy white day, and someone put happy white teeth. Um, it, it was, and I was reading the comments, and it's like, and sometimes I every think, day is white teeth. They said we should have white month. I mean, it was I was reading the comments, and I was just like, these people are ignorant. But but the crazy part about it is, nine times out of ten, y'all commenting. And the majority of y'all is commenting anonymously mm -hmm. under a pseudo yep. name. Yep. And you ain't really got your information posted um, on these sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because someone told me they should get a noose for me. A noose. Someone, wow. someone told me they should get for a noose you? for me. Yeah. I'm wait, saying, wow. wait, wait, wait. Say that again? Someone said, I. so um, Roseanne Barr did an interview with P Pierce Morgan and she was spewing all these lies about Jill Biden was um, was Joe Biden's first wife's nanny and, you know, all this stuff. And and, and Pierce was like, no, that's not right. She was like, we need to check Google, we need to check Google. Anyway, she was going off with these crazy stories. And I commented, can somebody please get her nurse? And someone commented, someone needs to get get your noose. Of course, wow. of course, no picture in the profile, no, you know. Yeah. And you know what? In, in all honesty, it's not like even. I told him, why don't you go get it? it. Say that again. I told him, why don't you go get it? <laughs> Good mm. comeback. Yeah. Forget but for all, all of the things that we've been through, right? There was a point in time where we've even tried to live separately and mm -hmm. we tried to have peace on our own. And you don't want us true. around, we won't be around. We'll create yeah. our own city. We'll yeah. do our own thing. It's you wouldn't even down. let us do that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't let us do that. Yeah. So what are we to do? Mm -hmm. What are we to do? Mm. Go go find a black job. 
<laughs> Find a black job. <laughs> I have a black job. <laughs> a couple of them, actually. All right. <laughs> Well, let's switch gears. Um, so an all-star tribute to Usher, um, Traji P. Henson's epic war wardrobe change instead of former Smart B's hottest um newcomers at uh the 2024 BET Awards was as usual a joyous and chaotic celebration of black culture. Victoria Monet was arguably the star of the night, winning video of the year and performing twice as a solo act and as part of a lifetime achievement award winner Usher both of which made our best moments, this is their best moments list. Um, and here are some of the, the highlights. They said Taraji P. Henson's wardrobe game. They said she returned to host for the third time. And obviously they upped the Oscar Emmy nominees clothing budget this year because every time she stepped out on stage, she was slaying, snatching, and serving. A different world reunion, Debbie Allen, Gerald M. Um, Bell, Cree Sumner, Kadeem Hardison, and Don Lewis on um, the BT Awards took a page out of the Emmys playbook with the cast reunion, this time giving some much needed flowers to the legendary, a different world cast, um, st which still has one of the greatest theme songs of all time. Tyler and Victor Monet burned up the stage, two of the hottest new acts in pop and R&B through uh, Victoria Monet has been around for years woke up and chose violence. Among a slew of performances, many of them from young women blowing up in hip hop, Tyler and Monet uh, turned into two of the most energetic and just plain enjoyable numbers of the night. Tyler performed her infectious jump while Monet turned it out with All Right. Usher tribute. BT pulled out all the stops to honor Lifetime Achievement Award winner Usher as they should with an all-star tribute of sing of singers featuring Childish Gambino, Kiki Palmer, um, Marsha Ambrosia, uh, Chloe Tanache, Lado, and Tiana Taylor and Victor and Monet stole the show um, with the Arab 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 interpretation of Usher's Bad Girl. Um, and they said it was great. And they said Lauren Hill not only showed up, but she showed out. Um, people love some Lauren Hill and especially her uh 1998 album, The Message Cave Lauren Hill. But let's be real, most of y'all didn't think that she was going to show up, at least not on time. But she showed up, she did, with her son, uh, YG Marley, and surprise guest Wyclef John, pr pr providing a show closing set that had the audience at the BET Awards on their feet singing out loud. Did you watch the BET Awards? What were your thoughts? And uh, some people say we don't have real stars anymore. What do you think? I'll let you go with you. Um, no, I did not watch. Jay and I had this conversation. You know, there was a time um, we couldn't wait for the Grammys. We couldn't wait for the BET Awards. Mm -hmm. Hell, we couldn't wait for the Source Awards. Source Awards. <laughs> like, you know, there, were, there was a time when we couldn't wait for those things because we knew that iconic moments were going to happen. Um, especially with the BET Awards, it was something different about the BET Awards back in the day. Mm -hmm. The Michael Jackson moment, the Prince moment, the Beyonce. Like, there were so many iconic moments. Um, we don't have that anymore. Um, and it's just, it's just not an interest for me. Um, because along the way we've lost, we've just lost it. <laughs> we've lost it. Um, and it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. I mean, congratulations to us to Usher. Mm -hmm. Yes, he deserves it. Um, I would have loved to see more brothers That's good in saying. the position of the ladies. Uh, you know honoring him i would have loved to i would have loved to see that because for me there are a lot of brothers that he's connected to that would have killed it yeah no shade to the ladies at all but i would have loved to see the brothers especially based off the speech that he gave mm -hmm. i would have loved to see the brothers you're the father you had a lot of options you know what I mean? That you could have chose from to do that. Um, but it just is it doesn't speak to me anymore. Yeah. What about you, Chike? 
coming fresh off of what Lania just said, the number one brother that probably should have been there, they will not allow on television due to his uh, what goes on in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Mr. Chris Brown, who's out here killing it in his hey, tour. tour. Killing it. Tour, yeah. Tour. Killing it. Red reviews. Um, technical difficulties and all. He's killing it. <laughs> Hang, hanging in the air and Hanging in the air. But he was singing, though. Singing. <laughs> um, I have the fortunate nature of having friends that are in the industry. And we talk about this quite often. The whole shift from that time frame that Lania was talking about when we used to anticipate turn on the recorder to record you know the awards when they were coming on because we wanted to capture some of the performances mm -hmm. that the record industry in itself has changed since that time yeah. and they are the gatekeepers as to who gets put in the spotlight and who's not in the spotlight mm -hmm. and what i see as i age um and what i'm paying attention to is all of the ageism that's in the industry and once you get past a certain point, it's like you're put out to pasture, like you no longer exist. And there are people out here that are legends that are still making music, that are still on tour. Patti LaBelle is doing, what is it, the the the, the 60, the 80, 60 something? Yeah. Tour? I forget the name of it. Her birthday but or something. Yeah. 80. Yeah, it's yeah. her birthday times the, the year she's been in the business mm -hmm. tour. Mm -hmm. Getting it. She's a senior citizen. Diana Getting Ross still on tour. Gladys Knight. Looking fabulous. And getting it. Yep. What is the problem? Why can't we revere and honor some of our, our senior legacy holders? Mm -hmm. I would love to see an award ceremony where the people that created the space for those people to stand are included. Maybe mm -hmm. do do uh, numbers together. Maybe that can be a unique show all on its own. Yeah. Um, not necessarily even... Um, let's say a show with just legends, but wouldn't you have liked to hear Patti LaBelle do an Usher number? That mm -hmm. would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Or those who or don't why really not people shine. come on, say that again? I said, or those who don't really get shine, like, I don't know, I'll take Layla Hathaway. I'll take yeah. Layla James. And Layla Hathaway yeah. has an album out right now. Brand new yeah. music, brand new. But I say that to say, if you, if you really wanted to honor Usher, I think it would have been more, not saying that those people weren't great, but I think that it would have been more touching for him if all the people that were included in his um, rise to fame were included in his tribute. Mm -hmm. I know that we got issues around that, that the guy did he, I know we have issues around him, maybe he wouldn't be included, but Jermaine Dupree, Babyface, uh, Babyface, you know, L.A. Reid, Faith, you mm -hmm. know, all the people that put ingredients into him becoming who he is. Mm -hmm. Why not have them people come honor him? Yeah. I mean, I saw someone when they showed Sexy Red on the red carpet, they said Beyonce will never come back to this again. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Listen, mm -hmm. you listen. I know that we had Lil' Kim mm -hmm. and we had uh, Foxy Brown you know, that were, you know, teetering on the edge. But it it got worse. Mm -hmm. It got worse. Yeah. At least it was palpable, but it got worse. Mm -hmm. And 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 I don't want to know that your 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 booty hole is brown. Right. I, I don't or what STDs you had. I don't want to know how many STDs you have. I'm not buying the lipstick that you got named after STDs. STDs. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I, it's, I, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's have, like, I don't know. I, it's just, I don't know. Mm. Oh, but I will say this. Kudos to Megan Stallion for opening up. Because yeah. she's been through a lot. Yeah. And yeah. I hate ignorant people. And she's been through a lot, and she's killing it. See you on Amazon Prime Day, Megan. Even when they said that uh, once a shot made a guy had to retract his statement, he said she wasn't an arena art, uh, artist, and she sold out arenas. Sold out all <laughs> her shows. Sold out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hot girl showed up and showed out. 
Yeah. That's how you shut. That's how you shut people down. Mm-hmm. That was that was that fool on the uh Ectus Club. I ain't mm-hmm. even gonna say the name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, well, last story. So Rick Ross has come to defense of Bronny James amidst the criticism surrounding his debut in the NBA. NBA. The son of basketball star LeBron James, Bronny was selected by the Los Angeles Lakers at the 55th pick in the 2024 NBA draft. This move has sparked controversy and skeptics claim that nepotism played a role in Bronny's draft placement, insinuating that his father's status played a larger role than his own skills. Nepotism, nepotism. You all make me sick. Every two years, y'all come up with a new word. The narrative, toxicity, toxic, now it's nepotism. 85% of you MFers got your job by someone you know. Little Bronny is bigger star than 90% of, of the MFers in the league, man. This, this big business, uh, Little Bronny sell more wings, stock wings, than anybody, 90% of the people in this MF are back in squads and that all that shit. First ends who want to get in the concert free, you end standing in line at the side door in the rain and you want to say nepotism. Uh, Raw's voice was exa- exacerbated with allegations uh, condone- condemning the overuse of the term like nepotism. He continued. He con- He contended that those who fought Bronny for leveraging his father's network often overlooked their own privileged connections. Uh, Ross underscores a double standard at play. Know that many individuals secure roles or chances through personal ties, yet they are swift to denounce Bronny for capitalizing on the same opportunities. Does um, Rick Ross have a point? I don't see what the problem is, personally. Um, certain people do it all the time. It's a way of life. Mm-hmm. No one else gets an opportunity because they're constantly um, utilizing nepotism. So full disclosure, today I gave my bid in at work because I interviewed um, a colleague's child today at work. We hired him today on the spot was dressed appropriately, was early, was articulate, was knowledgeable, had experience. How could you deny that? Just happens to be the child of a colleague. Yeah. That colleague referred that child to that position. Mm -hmm. That's nepotism. Yeah. But deserve to be there. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sure LeBron's son tried out. And he's good. They've been watching him for the last couple of years. <laughs> Saying he was going to the NBA. It's not It's not a surprise. And it's not like he made it in the first round. He made it in the second round, 55th pick. 55th pick. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's going to happen? What's going to happen? He's going to show him. Uh, yeah. Tony Braxton has this saying that when people are negative, she wants to know if you know these people. Mm-hmm. Um, w- w- I'm trying to think of the name, Mr. and Mrs. I'm gonna show them. Yeah, yeah. Then, what are your thoughts on this? I'm all for the nep and the tism. Let me explain something to you. White people have been doing that, using that for years, for years. Now, let's go back on a smaller scale. For us, for instance. Well, you gotta hook up at your job at some point. All of us have either asked or somebody asked us if we had a hookup somewhere, and we've utilized whatever or they utilize whatever to help each other out. We've now, done that. With, with that, Lanier, what happens when you are the one that walks into that situation? What is your duty? What is your job? As far as like what you did? Yes. No, no, not what I did. When 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 the recipient of what I did. Oh, oh. What, is, what is the purpose of that person? I'ma come in ready, show and prove. hungry, yeah. and to show and prove. Cause I first of all, it's not just for me. You are putting your neck out yeah. on the line for me. Mm-hmm. You putting your neck out on the line for me, and I'm gonna have to show them what I can do. 
because this ain't this ain't this ain't no game and I, it might be far-fetched but i'm gonna say this even though they're not related ain't this some form of nepotism with this whole supreme court thing and that man yep mm -hmm. ain't that a form of nepotism Ain't it didn't, a he make, did, didn't he make his his daughter in law the head of the RNC? I, did, his daughter in law didn't he make his first of all he's his not kids. a political person, nor are his kids. Mm -hmm. But they had all kinds of titles when he was yeah. in office. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't his son in law his get two billion dollars from the Saudi people? He wouldn't have gotten that if he wasn't mm -hmm. in office. That man couldn't even get security clearance to be in the White House, but he was there. That is the net of the tism in yeah. white form. Period. Right. So and and I know I know why LeBron did it because LeBron said he always said he wanted to play with his, his son. son before he retired. Brown about to opt out. He about to retire soon. Guess what? I'm all. Yeah, I agree. Listen, my last four jobs were based on people that I knew. Hmm. They got me to the table. I got the job, but it was people I knew. Yeah, you know, to the men. Yeah, so you know, listen. I used to teach this uh this life skill class, and it said it's not who you know, it's who you know that likes you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if they do it, keep it all the way funky. When you know that you're recommending or referring someone, you already know what their work ethic is. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you don't know. You already know you have a semblance, especially, and I, I don't know how old the young man is, Chike, but then you know his his parents or parents work, at work ethic. Mm -hmm. So he's yep. attached to, he's attached to I'm going to say greatness because that's what we are. We're greatness. So he already came from good pedigree. The rest is up to him. Yeah. Listen, this this is a young man out of high school. He brought up God in his interview. He won me over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, listen, thank you all so much for um, Hot Topics. Have a wonderful summer. I'm sure we're talking about, but have a wonderful summer and we'll see you in the fall. Uh, when we come back, movie reviews right back after this.